Welcome everyone. The topic for this video is going to be going over the microscope. Microscopes are wonderful tools that we can use in the lab to view things that we wouldn't otherwise be able to see with the naked eye. Some of you may have used microscopes before and some of you may have not. I will be tailoring this presentation to go over the basics of the microscope, how they work, and their specific parts. Ultimately, what we want to do is determine what the total magnification of a picture is going to be, and also learn the theory behind how microscopes work and how we're supposed to take care of them. So there are several types of microscopes, but the specific microscope that we use in the Pensacola State Lab is called the Compound Light Microscope. We call it the Compound Light Microscope because it uses light and it has more than one lens. Compound means we have two lenses playing a role in adding to the total magnification. Our two lenses are called the ocular lens and the objective lens. The ocular lens does not ever change. It always has the same magnification and it's what you look through when you're looking into the microscope. The objective lenses, on the other hand, are going to be the ones that do change. We can rotate the objective lenses in what's known as the nose piece to give us stronger magnifications of the picture that we're looking at. As I mentioned, there are many other types of microscopes as well. However, it is the compound light microscope that is the most commonly used in labs today. So the first thing that we really want to grasp about the microscope are its different parts. Each part is going to serve a purpose for the microscope in some way. Some parts are going to add a more complex function, and others will be much more simplistic. But every single part of the microscope serves a purpose in one way or another. So we'll see that the ocular lens, which was described on the last slide, is shown here. We call it the ocular lens because you look through it with your eye. This is the lens that doesn't ever change. It always has the same magnification. You'll look through this lens, and then there's other lenses that can be found down here. And that's what's going to cause the magnification of your picture. We'll also find a more structural part, which is the arm. The arm is what you use to hold the microscope and carry it around to different places. And we'll have a base that the microscope sits upon. Some of the more notable features of the microscope are the nose piece, objective lenses, and the stage. The stage is going to have several knobs over on one side of it that will allow the stage to move back and forth. We want our stage to be adjustable so that we're not stuck looking at only one part of the microscope slide. We'll also have the nose piece which rotates about a central point and that's going to contain the objective lenses. And it is the objective lenses that are going to add to our microscope's total magnification. We will often have three objective lenses and an oil immersion lens. We don't use the oil immersion lens as much in lab class. We focus mostly on the three objective lenses. And each objective lenses will rotate about the nose piece and can be used to view the microscope slides at different magnifications. Each objective lens has its own individual magnification, and I will introduce each of these individual objective lenses a little bit later. But as we're looking at a compound light microscope, that's exactly what we're referring to. We have one lens up here and one lens down here. And we're going to multiply their magnifications together, and that will give us our total magnification. We also call this the light microscope because it has a light source. We turn on this light source, and that's going to pass light through the microscope slide that's on the stage. And that gives us the ability to see the structures that the light is passing through. Microscopes are very useful tools that we can use to view very, very tiny things. And it's very important that we treat our microscopes with care. So there is actually a method that we use to hold microscopes to ensure that we don't bump the microscope against any other structures that are found in the lab, or we don't drop it. We always put one hand under the base of the microscope to ensure that the microscope doesn't fall, and we'll use our other hand to hold the arm of the microscope. You keep it close to your body so that ensures you have more control over this expensive piece of equipment. Now the lenses are set up to focus on an individual point. Therefore, when viewing structures under the microscope, it is imperative that our stage is in the right place positioned at that focal point. And that's what we're going to use these two knobs for. We'll have the coarse adjustment knob on the outside and the fine adjustment knob here in the center. Now I know this might be a little tough to see, but the coarse adjustment knob of course is this outer portion, and the fine adjustment knob actually projects out from the coarse adjustment knob also. 
This is going to stick out a little bit and you'll be able to use them separately. The course adjustment knob produces a noticeable visual change in the distance of the stage from the objective lens. And the fine adjustment knob will not produce a visible difference in the distance between the stage and the objective lens. The course adjustment knob is typically what you're going to use when you're readjusting your microscope slides in the first place. You always want to make sure the stage is as far away as possible from the objective lenses as not to damage or scratch the objective lenses. This gives you more working space if you lower the stage all the way down. So when you are switching between microscope slides, you always want to use the course adjustment knob as it's simply easier to bring the stage up closer to the objective lenses where the focal point's going to be. Now the fine adjustment knob is what's going to be used from here on after. Once we have gotten our microscope slide up to where the focal point of the objective lens is going to be, we will use that fine adjustment knob to make very minor changes in the distance between our stage and the objective lens. This is typically going to be useful as you switch between the objective lenses. As I already mentioned, the stage will also be able to move back and forth due to the adjustment of these stage adjustment knobs. One knob is going to move the stage right to left, and the other knob will move the stage forwards and backwards. And it is the coarse adjustment knob and the fine adjustment knob that will move the stage either further away from the objective lenses or closer to the objective lenses. Now we have our light source here and there's going to be the on switch that we'll use to turn the light on. However, the amount of light coming out of the light switch is very important for getting the best picture. And that is why we use the iris diaphragm lever. The iris diaphragm lever adjusts how much light is able to pass through the stage and through the microscope slide. This is one of the two ways that we can adjust the light on the microscope. You will find the iris diaphragm lever just below the stage. The second way that we can regulate the amount of light that comes through the microscope slide is with the intensity control. Every microscope will have some place to control the amount of light that is emitted from our light source. Every microscope is a little bit different and the on and off switch tends to change based on what company has produced the microscope. But all of these microscopes will plug into the wall and you can turn them on to produce that light in the first place. So the next major concept that we want to look into is total magnification. Total magnification is determined by taking the strength of the ocular lens and multiplying that with the strength of the objective lens that is being used. We have to keep in mind that it is the ocular lens that does not ever change. The strength of the ocular lens will always be the same for every single objective lens. Now each of our individual objective lenses is going to stay the same. However, we can change the objective lens that we are using to look at a particular picture. So you multiply the magnification of both of the lenses that you are using and that will give you the total magnification. So the ocular lens is the one that does not change. It will always have the same strength. The magnification of the ocular lenses on the microscopes at the Pensacola State College Laboratory is 10 times. Every ocular lens that I ask about on any of my quizzes will have a magnification of 10. So all you'll need to do to determine what the total magnification is, is take the number 10 and multiply it by whatever the magnification is of the objective lens that is being used. Now the objective lenses are the ones that do change. Each of these objective lenses can rotate about the nose piece and that's going to change the total magnification as we look through the microscope. The strength of the three objective lenses that we use are a strength of four times, 10 times and 40 times. You can see that 10 times is shown on the objective lens that has the yellow line and 40 times is shown on the objective lens that has the blue line. The lowest power objective, which is also known as the scanning objective lens, is going to have the lowest power and that is a strength of four times. We can't see that on this picture because it's behind this lens, but I will show you the scanning objective lens shortly. So depending on the specific objective lens being used, that is the one that's going to be used to determine what our total magnification is. Now microscopes will have either three to four objective lenses. However, the ones we have in the lab will have three. As I've just explained, we have one with a strength of four, one with a strength of 10, and one with a strength of 40. 
So the first of our objective lenses is the scanning objective lens, which has a magnification of four times. For our purposes, this is going to be the one with the red line, and you can see four written on this objective to indicate that we are getting four times magnification. Now, in order to get the total magnification, we have to remember that we are looking also through the ocular lens, and that is going to play a role in what our total magnification is. We take the magnification of our ocular lens and multiply it by the magnification of our objective lens. So in this example, when we're using the scanning objective lens, we take 4 times 10, and that gives us a total magnification of 40. 40 times. So the picture that we're viewing under the microscope is 40 times as large as it is to the naked eye. Now, as we rotate each of these objective lenses, they're going to get stronger and stronger. The next objective lens I'm going to mention is the low power objective, which has a magnification of 10 times. So, with the same theory that we saw with our scanning objective lens, how we would calculate the total magnification of a picture that is seen through this low power objective lens, is we're going to take the magnification of our ocular lens, and multiply it by the magnification of this low power objective. So we take 10 for our ocular lens, multiply that by 10 in the low power objective, and that's going to give us a total magnification of 100 times. So the picture viewed with this objective lens will be 100 times larger than we see with the naked eye. We also want to keep in mind that the low power objective lens is the one with the yellow line. Our final objective lens that we will be talking about in this class is the high power objective lens. The high power objective lens has the blue line and it has a magnification of 40 times. So same theory, we take 40, multiply it by 10, and that gives us a total magnification of 400. So I want you all to be able to calculate total magnification based on the ocular lens's strength and also the strength of the objective lens that's being used. So what we need to remember about objects under the microscope is that we can only distinctly see two objects if they are far enough apart from each other that light can pass between them. If light cannot pass between those two objects, we will not see them as two different objects. So we can actually measure the distance between two objects and we call that the resolving power of the microscope. This is what is limiting our ability to see things clearly under the microscope. Two other concepts that are very important to keep in mind when we are viewing things under the microscope is the field of view and the depth of focus. The field of view refers to the area of things that you can see under the microscope. This is a nice picture to show you what the field of view would look like as you are looking into a microscope. One thing to keep in mind is that the field of view is going to change based on the total magnification. With the scanning objective lens, we might be looking under the microscope and seeing a picture that looks something like this. But as we switch to our low power objective, we're actually going to be decreasing the overall field of view. Now the structures inside of the field of view will be viewed a little bit bigger. So we'll actually see that all of the structures inside of the red circle will actually be blown up to be the same size as this circle. But what we need to keep in mind is that as the total magnification will increase, the field of view will decrease. The depth of focus of a microscope slide is also another concept that limits our ability to see things clearly. What we have to remember with depth of focus is that even though the structures that are put on a microscope slide are very, very thin, sometimes as thin as 5 micrometers in thickness, there is still a height to the actual stuff on the microscope slide. So even though we've taken a very, very slim section, there is still a thickness to the structures on the microscope slide. Depth of focus manifests under the microscope as certain substances appearing more blurry than others. As we use the fine adjustment knob, we will pull certain parts of the picture into focus, and as we do this, other parts of that picture are going to go out of focus. So we get this mixed picture where certain structures on the microscope slide are going to look very crisp and clear while others are going to be blurry. This is due to those objects being in different distances away from the objective lenses. Even though this is a very small distance, we can still see the depth of focus manifesting when we are looking at structures through the microscope. 
I also want to tell you all about the working distance. The working distance is the actual distance between the edge of the objective lens and the microscope slide that is sitting on the stage. We will see very shortly how working distance is also affected by the total magnification. So I've already said this once before, but as you are taking a new microscope slide and getting ready to put it under the microscope to view whatever's on that microscope slide, you always want to make sure the working distance is at its maximum. The course adjustment knob is the part of the microscope that will adjust the working distance specifically between the objective lens and the stage. So you want to increase that working distance as much as possible before putting a microscope slide onto the stage. You want to make sure that you give yourself as much room as possible to ensure you're not damaging those objective lenses. You can see that on this picture there is plenty of room between the objective lens and the microscope slide that is resting on the stage. Once we have placed the microscope slide on the stage and secured it in place, it is now time to start focusing your microscope slide to the objective lens. So you'll look through the ocular lens with your objective lens in place. You always want to go ahead and start with the scanning objective lens. You never want to start with the high power or the low power objective. You start with the scanning at all times to give yourself the most working distance and also to make sure that your picture is in focus. So as you look through the ocular lens, you're going to use that course adjustment knob to bring the stage up further closer to the scanning objective until that picture is finally in focus. At this point, you are looking for the minimum working distance between the stage and the objective lens. That minimum working distance is going to give you a nice clear picture. You can use the stage adjustment knobs to move the microscope slide around in case there's a particular part of the microscope slide that you want to view, but you always start with the course adjustment knob to make sure that you're getting your microscope in focus most efficiently. And it is only after you have used the course adjustment knob that you will then use the fine adjustment knob to make very minor changes in the working distance. So there's another concept about microscopes that I want to share with you all that make it much easier to stay focused when you're changing between the objective lenses. And that is this word, parfocal. Parfocal means that when one objective lens is in focus, all of the objective lenses are roughly in focus as well. So once you get the stage in the right spot for the scanning objective lens, you'll be just about in the right spot for the low power objective and the high power objective and you will only need to make minor changes with that fine adjustment knob. Once you have gotten your microscope slide in focus with the scanning objective lens, you are finally ready to switch to the low power objective. You can see that once the low power objective is rotated in place, as long as the scanning objective lens was in focus, will not touch the microscope slide. Now what we can also see here, however, is that the working distance is drastically decreasing as we change these objective lenses. There was much more working distance between the scanning objective lens and the microscope slide than here with the low power objective lens. So this is why you want to make sure that you're only using the fine adjustment knob because if you do use the coarse adjustment knob at this point you're going to drastically put your picture out of focus. As we progress on to the high power objective you can see that the working distance decreases even further. There is a very, very small distance between the high power objective lens and the microscope slide when the high power objective lens is in focus. So once you have used the fine adjustment knob to get your low power objective lens in focus, you can then proceed to move your high power objective lens in focus. And the high power objective lens will right about be where it's supposed to. This is what we mean when we say that microscopes are parfocal. All of these objective lenses are roughly in focus, and as long as we're only using that fine adjustment knob, we will stay within the right focal range. Now once you are finished viewing a particular picture on the microscope slide, you want to use the course adjustment knob to increase the working distance back to its maximum, to give you more space to remove that slide and add in another slide. After that new slide has been added, you will repeat this process of using the course adjustment knob back with the scanning objective lens and you will proceed to increase in the total magnification. You never want to start with the low power or the high power. You always want to begin your focus with the scanning objective lens, that's the one with the red line, and using the course adjustment knob. After you are finished using microscopes, you want to make sure that you are taking care of this expensive piece of equipment. So you want to make sure it's properly cleaned after you're done. 
One of the most common things that I see with new students using microscopes is that they will often leave the last slide on the microscope. It's very important that we take that last slide off and we put it back in the slide box where all of the microscope slides are contained. If we leave a microscope slide on the stage, this has the chance to fall off and break when we are moving the microscope around. So you always want to make sure that you remove the last slide whenever you're finished. You'll typically find glass cleaner and lens paper in the lab that you can use to wipe off the objective and the ocular lenses before you put your microscope away. It is typically good practice to start by cleaning the ocular lens first, then moving on to the scanning objective lens, the low power objective lens, and then the high power objective lens. And if you've used the oil immersion lens, you want to make sure that you clean that one as well. This is good practice because it ensures that you won't forget cleaning any lenses. For the next student that's going to be using the microscope, you always want to make sure that you reset back with the scanning objective lens as that's the first one that you'll always use when you put in a new microscope slide. Don't forget to turn off the light and nicely wrap up the electrical cord around the microscope and bring it back to its assigned location in storage. Each microscope has a number and belongs in a particular spot. This helps us to keep track of where our microscopes are and if there is any damage with our microscopes, we can make sure that we are fixing the right ones. That will conclude our PowerPoint presentation on microscopes. I will see you all in the next lecture presentation when we will discuss the cell cycle and mitosis.